the 190, all on their way to the testing rooms. Their water jackets are treated against corrosion. And then... Listen to the roar of the engines on their eight-hour test. That same roar of Hall Scott power can be heard on the streets of a hundred cities. It is echoed in the mountain passes of Alaska and along the Lincoln Highway. It is the sound of power that carried men away from Dunkirk and Crete and brought them back again to North Africa and Sicily, to Attu and to Kiska. Marines landing on Guadalcanal have heard it, and it shared desert heat and winter cold with truck drivers on the open road. But those shipping crates must wait a little longer, for experience has taught us one thing more. It has taught us that we must be our own most critical customer. That's why, after the test run, every engine is subjected to one final inspection. On the Defender, for instance, the head is taken off for checking and touching up the valves. The lower crankcase is detached, and the engine quickly transferred to a special stand. When it's lowered and adjusted into place, the bolts are released and the cylinder is set into position so that the connecting rods and pistons can be removed for a careful and thorough check. Bearing caps are removed so that the bearings themselves can also be checked. And all this extra precaution is taken because of the human equation, which is not infallible. Any little human slip which might occur will show up in the test run and is always caught in this department. Although these slips happen rarely, we still feel that the teardown inspection is worth the extra effort. Reassembly would be slow and difficult were it not for the accessibility made possible by unit construction. And precision machining has seen to it that all component parts go back into place easily, perfectly. Here, too, every operation is under the eyes of inspectors. At this stage, there is no time for errors, and there are none. For in a few moments now, the engine will be ready, ready for a final test. And when we are convinced that it will run eight hours multiplied by 10 or 20,000 times, when the engine is treated for complete protection against corrosion, only then is it painted, crated, and shipped to our branches in Seattle, in New York, and Los Angeles, shipped to wherever real power is needed. Power for obtaining the very source of power. These engines are used for driving the mud pump. These provide the power for drilling the oil well to a depth of 10,000 feet. Their crankshafts aren't turning for five or six hours at a time. They are operating 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. The operations of this large stabilization plant depend entirely on the cooling system which a battery of Hall Scotts keep going night and day. apparatus powered by Hall Scott 190s. They were the first horizontal engines used for this job, providing a shorter wheelbase for greater maneuverability on city streets and a low center of gravity for greater speed on turns. This fireboat has been repowered with twin V12 defenders to increase its speed and pumping capacity. It takes a lot of power to throw that fire-quenching wall of water. Also powered by twin V-12 defenders are the 63-foot Miami boats. They were adopted in large quantities not only by the United States Army and Navy, but also by England and Russia after experiments with many other types. Their engines deliver about 1,400 horsepower and a speed of 40 miles an hour. And they were first used to rescue pilots and crews whose planes had been forced down at sea. But their performance has been such that they now serve wherever the demand is for high speed and maneuverability. Almost twice as large as the Miami are the English Fairmile boats, also powered by twin Hall Scott Defenders. 
Their hulls were designed around the engine, and their jobs include anti-submarine work. Coastal escort patrol, mine laying, commando operations. They have seen action in the Channel, Mediterranean, Caribbean, across the Atlantic and the Pacific. And upon land, powered by Hallscott 190 horizontal engines, are the Brill-built ACF intercity coaches. And in combat, should one of our tanks be disabled, it must be brought back behind the lines for repair, even while the fight is still going on. That is the job cut out for the tank recovery unit. Its Hallscott 440 engine can easily handle 80 tons and will drive the entire unit up or down 50% grades over sand, through underbrush, or anything you have. In addition to loading tanks onto the trailer, it can just as easily pull them out of mud or shell holes. An engine used under the critical conditions that this equipment must face cannot and will not fail. Nor will the power plants in these landing boats fail. They are the aptly named Hall Scott Invaders. Wherever the men of our striking forces attack, these boats ground upon the beach and then pull off again under their own power. The engines are designed to take the terrific beating of backing out swiftly through the teeth of the breakers so as to clear the way for other onrushing invaders. And after the nearly 40 years it has taken to build these engines, we can hardly remember what a world without power would be like. But we do know that in the future for which we are already planning, all Scott engines will have behind them the same experience, the same managerial policy, and advanced engineering design which distinguish them today. Power with economy of fuel and maintenance. Power for a lifetime. Power by Scott.